Hey guys, what's up? It's Lizzie Jane. I hope your week has been off to a gorgeous, beautiful, spectacular start. I'm sitting down with a dear friend of mine today. He goes by the name Drink Your Water. He came on briefly when we did the live series at Soul Fest this past summer. It was lovely to reconnect with Kevin before his show at Ogden in Denver, Colorado. We talk about music, touring. This past weekend, he just played Thunderdome, which I'm pretty sure is a bucket list item for anyone in the dubstep or bass scene. And to play the Tacoma Dome is definitely a bucket list venue. Uh, All of the videos and everything that I've seen has looked absolutely massive. I am so happy for him. He is such a down-to-earth individual that deserves everything and more. So tap into the conversation. Make sure if you love the conversations I'm having, you're learning from them, you're enjoying them, you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, follow us on Instagram and TikTok and Spotify and Apple and Google and wherever you listen to us. Make sure you're tapping in to receive all of the content that we put out weekly. Without further ado, this is Lizzie Jane. I hope your week is beautiful and you are tuning into my podcast with Drink Your Water. The show today was brought to you by Vitaplur E-Boost Gum. With no pill to take or powders to mix, Vitaplur E-Boost Gum is a first-of-its-kind energy rave supplement that provides magnesium, electrolytes, and antioxidants while you chew. Vitaplur is the perfect complement to my active lifestyle, whether it's at the festival, on the road touring, or hitting the gym. Chew Vitaplur and dance with confidence. Use code Lizzie Jane for 10% off any order. Kevin returns to the podcast. We'll be back. My dear friend, Kevin. Oh, again, how times have changed. Oh my gosh. Since what? Well, when was SoulFest? May? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of time in between there. A lot and of cool stuff's happened. You were already like touring. Like I felt like you were already on the road. You were like, I've barely been home. I haven't had a second to think. But it. I don't think it amounted to this fall and the summer run. Yeah, definitely not. It the momentum was a little crazier towards the the tail end of the year for for sure. Hundred yes. percent. Yes. So we here now. Back we in Denver. Now. Back in Denver. Denver loves you. Denver's a perfect place for the Drink Your Water project. I love it so much. I you throw a rock and you hit a dubstep DJ. It's like honestly wonderful. Yep. And and the Ogden is such a dope venue. It is. Like such a cool room and Denver just has like the plan. They have the plan for the artists to grow, come back, do a support play, grow, do Red Rocks, come back, yeah. headline. And you just create this whole little culture around you. And that's why like, that's like I owed like Grizz's community to like the people of Denver. Because they're that fucking wild. And they are loyal here. They're so loyal. They, they rock with you. They will show you they rock with you here. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. most merch I've ever seen people wearing is always in Denver. So so much love for it here and that's like an ode to the community of just you know they will spend their last dollar to support you one million percent and last time you were here you were playing red rocks for wakan rocks sure did let's talk about that experience oh my gosh well obviously for anybody first time playing red rocks uh bit intense very bucket list type venue Mm -hmm. and you know it happened so fast because it was a 45 minute set for one so that already made it feel a little quick but just the adrenaline of being up there was just so much because looking up into the crowd in my mind so many times during the set, I was like, I used to be up there watching shows like so many different times mm-hmm. and just wondering what it'd be like to play there. I never actually in my head said, I'm going to play there one day. I always just like, that would be so cool, you know? So that same for you, though, Miss. I played two nights in a row. I We're know, lit. I know. We're it, lit it right now. It's crazy because I did one with Vale. And Vale was playing with Black Tiger Sex Machine. Mm -hmm. And then you were like the day or night before Before. or after. Yeah. Right before. And I was like, oh, Kevin's going to be here. Then I was like, we are all winning on Red Rocks. Like, it's honestly so incredible to see. And, you know, again, just like for people listening who haven't seen our other two podcasts, this is our third podcast. This is our third. We did a COVID one and then we did Soul Fest and then we did it. Soul Fest, like you, you were, you were growing in the same kind of lane and momentum that you're in now but it was it was not as fucking wild as your life has been the last six months since we last talked but covid 2021 2020 when we did this and it was under it wasn't even i remember i didn't even title this 
Drink Your Water. I titled it Kevin Flom. That's right. Yeah, because I didn't really have traction on the Drink Your Water name. So it made more sense. You to- were a resident. I was a resident. We were like, how the, like, like maybe it's going to happen. Like, like maybe. And it was it- a maybe then. It really was a maybe. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And it just happens. And But again, all of the hard work, all of the accumulation, all of the dominoes finally falling into place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you like, let's talk. Let's just dive into the music, the touring. Like, where do you feel like your head's at currently? Like, what are some things you've struggled with? Tell me some moments from the last six months on the road. Oh, goodness. So uh, definitely everybody says this who's, you know, full-time touring. It takes a toll on you in every mm-hmm. single way you can think of. Uh, it's a lot of physical toll, a lot of mental toll. Um, but at the end of the day, if you have, you know, the right people around you and you got the right things to make you happy, you're good. So like, I do have things that keep me sane on the road, but a lot of times it's, you know, super early flight, traveling alone all day, getting to the hotel, being alone in the hotel all day till sound check, and then going back after the show alone. So it's like a lot of like, there's no one to like share the excitement with the whole time. So that's like really, I would say the hardest part about it is just kind of being alone sometimes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like it's a dream come true. And that's always the the silver lining that makes me like see past all the stuff that makes me feel down. Absolutely. So, the high highs, the low lows. Oh, goodness. They're so real. Balancing the duality where, you know, you have those moments where you play such massive shows and you're touring. See, I haven't gotten to that moment yet where I have three shows in a weekend. I have four shows in a weekend or you have a festival and then you have an after party and then you have show, show, show. And I know that's coming in its own right. However, that high versus the low is going to be an adjustment for me. Because, you know, you're going, when you walk into these venues, you do sound check, you're chilling, you have a crew with you, you have team, friends, all of this socialization and it takes almost everything out of you. And then when you're done playing, then you socialize even more. Yep. And then you go home and you're like, am I in a dream? Is this a simulation? It never feels Parallel real. Reality. It never feels real. Like even on the most sober nights, it's still like, you know, have a couple of drinks there and there, you know, oh, wow, that was so crazy. But even on the sober nights, I'm like, wow, like, did that happen? Mm-hmm. Red Rocks was one of those for me. I was like, did that actually happen? Even when you're sober too, that's that was the difference between night one, night two, night one. I was like, we are fucking here. We are on top of it. Like everybody does line check. Like we have our sound check, wireless packs working, like voices sounding good, no drinking. Like I think we took one shot because I had a bunch of people from my management team there because they live here, which is lovely. Right. And and that was like it. Night two, I was like, maybe some mushrooms, maybe some this, there maybe we some go. that. There and I was go. like, okay, but it's so different. And sometimes I feel like when you're sober, you really like almost it's almost even more of a trip because you feel this high and you're like i'm not on anything i'm mm-hmm. not drunk i'm not tipsy i'm i didn't smoke weed like i'm just like chilling and your body just feels like it's an overdrive oh 100 <laughs> straight sensory overload everything do you have like pre-show not like a ritual like are you someone who like set the scene for me before you like go on stage. Are you someone who you prep for your sets back home throughout the week? You know what you're doing. Are you changing shit until 10 minutes before you go on stage? And you're like, yo, 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 export, export. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. I have recently done a few just like last minute edits in the green room. But mm-hmm. most of the time I'm spending my weeks beforehand getting everything ready. So I don't have to travel with like all my stuff really. But I do bring my my record box laptop with me to a good bit of shows because there's yes. always like you get an idea last minute and you want to throw something together. So it, it does happen. Definitely. Um, as far as like a ritual, it's always a cold shower, like right before I leave. Oh, yeah. That always like the ice bath. Effect not even almost. not even like a true cold shower. I'll take a normal shower and then mm-hmm. the last minute I'll have it blasting cold. And then that's when I cut it off. And that always gets me so awake and so ready to take on whatever. So. That's like kind of what I've been doing every set, like yeah. before every set now. And cold water is just good for you, dude. Yeah. Like the ice, the ice bath, cold shower ordeal is something that I think a lot of people, like maybe a generation or two older than us are super onto. Mm-hmm. And I don't see a ton of people in, in our age range do it quite yet. Definitely. But, but I feel like it's just something that wakes you up and it makes you feel 
great that you did something hard. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds so weird because it's like, oh, you took like a cold fucking shower, like da da da. Right. But it, no, it's, it's not tough. comfortable. It's, it's tough. not fucking comfortable. You don't want to be in it. Like, yeah. And it's the the fight or flight mode that your body goes into is mm -hmm. really good for your nervous system. Exactly. And so yeah, I don't know. I've been, you know, I'm not I haven't graduated to ice baths yet, but mm -hmm. definitely the cold showers. They do it. They do it every night. Literally. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the ice bath is like next up i don't know how i i would do it because just the shower alone i can't stand under it for like more than five seconds sometimes so it's like I, know. I don't know how people do the ice bath like lower your whole body and blank does that a lot and he doesn't fucking hear really no way yeah you gotta do like the super deep breaths before yeah. you go in i couldn't yep. do it yep. i couldn't do it I see people shout do out it to you blank that's nuts yeah i know right and and but i get it it's like the social awareness and it also goes back to like being on the road like how are you eating? Are you hitting the gym? Is that even possible? Are you yeah. sleeping? Like, it's such a balance. Like, tell me about what your days are like during your off days when you're home. Okay. Like, like what? Like, walk me through a Kevin day. Kevin day. So yeah. uh, a normal Kevin day with like a couple of days before and after off would be kind of just getting like all my stuff together for the next weekend, you know, just okay. making laundry, mm -hmm. be done. And then um, for the most part, I do spend a lot of time on my laptop trying to make me more music every single day and then when i'm not doing that it's usually just like on discord on my pc playing video games with my friends or hanging out with my girlfriend so really those are things that i just kind of juggle and turn into a, like a really healthy balance with everything but most of the time you see me in the house in the studio just chilling those will fill your time yeah and isn't it nice having i think we talked on this briefly last time but it was just like such a quick conversation um it's nice having a significant other who can humble you, balance you, oh, like bring self-awareness in and like be involved in things that aren't necessarily like rave EDM industry yeah. music, like because that can get a lot. Yeah. You know, sometimes you want to break from it. Yeah. And when we first started dating, she told me she's like, I'm the most normal girl you're ever going to meet in your life. And I was like, all right, I need that. So mm -hmm. the way she balances out my crazy life is so cool. Like, Sometimes she doesn't even like let me talk about music. She's like, let's just be, you just be Kevin today. You know what I'm saying? Just be Kevin and enjoy being you and not you for anyone else. Just be you for you for the time. So I love that. Super, super grounding and humbling that she keeps me on my, you know, on that level of where if I ever get to like this point, the tipping point, she always kind of just brings it back down. Yeah. So it's nice. It's like the summit meter. Yep. Like, yep. Like, yep. Yep. It's like you tip to John's <laughs> level and you go, whoa, yep. wait, we're back. We're back. Um, yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think until you have it in your life and you and I have both kind of operated and existed in like local regional pockets of scenes where yep. we didn't have those significant others. And I think now putting it into like a conceptualization of what they bring to the table as far as like how they've positively impacted our lives and our careers. Right. It's like, priceless so priceless it's priceless it is it's, it's lovely it's a gift i wish everybody could have it yeah. and enjoy it because it's nuts because people get lost i mean i'm sure i i feel like i'm a bit not necessarily removed i just feel like i'm doing my own thing but i'm really enjoying my life and it's it's better for me and i've found as i've continued down this journey to make my social media posts interact where i need to and then try and get the fuck off of it yeah. and like exist because but and, and sometimes it does make me feel a bit detached and like not in the know like i see these new names pop up and i'm like who the fuck are you yeah, guys like, I, know. I don't know who you are I, we I, used to be those people i get fomo a lot mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. missing out on things and no, yep. i feel it but the disconnect is so important it's so important it's so important it's so important and and so we had red rocks you've done dates on AT Aliens. Yep, did AT Aliens tour. We did G Rex Buku tour. We did Marada tour, like 18 something stops with him. Then we did Raven Schoon tour, about 20 stops with him. And then we did Black Tiger Sex Machine tour. Did we say that already? No, we didn't. No, no, so no, that's no. Five. We, did, we didn't. And then Level Up tour, that's six. And then, yeah, yeah six tours this year. What? Oh, tomorrow's date. Oh, with company, yeah, the company tours. Company, oh so my technically God, seven tours this year. Shout out Ben Uckel, my agent. He's you working know, me. You literally like <laughs> took the thought out of my mind because I do want to talk about this. So like on, you know, the back end side of things, a lot of people like hearing about the agencies and they understand like that, you know, don't get a manager before you need one. Don't get an agent before you need one. Right. 
in your case specifically from like an outsider artist point of view, I feel like your agent helped you a shit ton. Oh, it changed my life. So like walk me through this because your agent is not part of the major conglomerates. He is part of a major agency. WME Just, is a fucking kick ass. Oh agency. yeah, they run the industry. But like, as far as for dance music, dance music, bass music, you for know, looking neat. at the Wasserman and the UTA, like versus the WME, like Griffin's on WME as well. Not yep. great success. Like y- you do it, but like it's almost a good thing in the way out of they have to fuck with you because no favors are being given ever. Yeah. Ever. Like, so so walk me through this process when, you know, did you approach him? Did he approach you? Did like, was this like six months of conversations that kind of came to fruition? Because mm-hmm. kind of you and then I just had hair to John. Okay. And we perfect. talked about him a bit too. And and it's a very cool situation. It's I want to hear about it. Yeah. So I was on an agency and not saying anything was not going the way I wanted to. I was just on a really small agency. And then I got approached by another agency. And then when we were about to go with this, so say, uh, agency, my manager goes, hey, I have a phone call. We have to do this phone call with this guy. He's really interested in you. And he knows you from college days. We went to USC together, I guess. No like, so we were like in the same region and like schools because I went to tech school right there, right next to it. So, got it. Yep. And we were the same year. So well, I think he's a year younger than me, but we were there at the same time. We just didn't know each other, but he was familiar with my rap project. Yeah. So- my manager was like, you need to hear this guy out. Like he, he's curious. I was like, what agency is? And he tells me WME. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so I go, yeah. I look it up. I'm like, yeah, Drake, Dua Lipa, like the biggest stars in the world are on WME. Yeah. So I'm like, yep. how is this going to work for my EDM project? Right. So then I, you know, we got to talking and whatnot. His mentor was Kyle Bandler, who is Martin Garrix's agent. That was Ben's mentor and showed him everything. So Ben is just this young, hungry agent that came out of nowhere. I didn't know his name. 24 hours later, he was my agent. It happened overnight. Legit. You just know when it's right, though. It was, you have yeah. that feeling. You're like, yo. It was overnight. And we had to tell the agency I was about to go with, like, yo, sorry. Like, something came up and we just have to, we have to go with this venture. Because we didn't sign anything yet. Nothing yeah. was on paper. So it wasn't, like, a bad sitch or anything. We just kind of just went with the the better hand that was dealt. So, Bro. Yeah. And it's like when those situations happen, it's just like you have that gut feeling. It's yeah. hard because like very oftentimes I think decisions can kind of be clouded by like other people on your team or other people in your life saying like, yo, yeah. we have all these weigh-ins and this is the cons and these are the pros and yeah. you have the mental list and and then sometimes shit like that just happens and you yeah. just know. I called Aaron. I was like, yo, Aaron, tell me a little bit about Ben. And he said, he changed my life. And now I use this same exact sentence. Right. I'm like, how do you change your life? He's like, just do it. He just knew what to do with you. It, it was See? instant. And and that's that's the thing where it's like, I get it. I, I've had so many different analogies talked about in this podcast of like where your project needs to be in order to be ready for an agent. Like mm. the car's got to be started. The Mercedes has to be rumbling. Like yeah. you're on the fucking track. Yeah. Like you're going. You got to have something. But when you put in the time and work and then you get the agent that's right for your project, mm. right for it, and has a genuine interest in you, not someone else on your management team, not someone else here, not someone else there, you, it changes your fucking life. It was insane. Yeah. And he's so genuine. Like he, we stay in, like we talk a lot. So like, it feels like a friendship too. At the same time, we just hung out in New York, like for a whole day and a half, he came to my show and it, just, it doesn't feel like forced. It doesn't feel like just business with him. Like he genuinely wants this project to go crazy. So, and wow, this year has just been so unreal. Thanks to him. And Next year is already kind of looking twice as crazy right now. So right. like what he showed me last week on the computer, like what we got coming up is a yeah. little like intimidating. It's a lot, but it's going to be another year of boots on the ground, like getting, just getting it done. Yeah. So we can get to the point where it's like, we can take a show and maybe like two, three shows a month type thing yeah. instead of like 12, you know? And then you like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're putting out, you're still writing crazy music. So like, I still much. see you yeah. writing clips and yeah. like, like posting shit all the time. Oh yeah. And, Staying and. Busy. I, I feel like, especially in the lane you're in, which is like dubstep, bass music, let's yep. fucking go. It's like two to three years of trying to hold your head on straight. Oh my God. And then you get to curate. Mm-hmm. And then you get to take a step back and say, all right, this is my vision. We now have the funds for production. We now have the funds to make 
whatever stage design happened, whatever curated night in Denver, Ogden, night one, night two, da da da. And these are the artists I want to bring up and fuck with and put on for. Yep. And you're in that process right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can only imagine headlining this place one day. That'd be so cool. Dude. We'll get there. I mean, there's another one is fucking, um, gosh, I'm a terrible person for not remembering his first name. Fucking Tate Beat. Oh, Burke. He, Burke. Yeah, Burke, he sold Burke. out both That's nights. That's what it is. That's what it is. Burke, he sold yeah. out both fucking nights here. I know. I know. And it's in like what? Is it soon? It's like next week. I can't. I texted him today about that. Zero actually. hundred. I texted him so quick. I was like, bro, I'm so happy for you. Like you sold out two nights in this big room up here. Like that's pretty nuts. Wild. Kid from Florida, like coming out of Denver and selling out two he nights. He was like nuts. in Tampa and, or in like fucking Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, like, he was down in South. Music. Yeah. And you like. The Wubbaholics guys still fucking rep him. Blew up. I love the I, Wubbaholics guys so I know, much. I know. Uh, I have seen that in the South. You know, and I I, I almost say you're from Florida, even though you're not from everyone Florida. Everyone thinks I'm from everyone Florida. Everyone thinks you're from Florida. Oh, Literally you. everyone does. Um, <laughs> the, the amount of like curated, like independent promotional teams putting shit on is very cool. Because oh, yeah. I don't think it was like that. Three years ago. Three Definitely years wasn't. Ago. The underground's got a, a big, big hand in a lot of things now. And they got the funds to put on dope shows and mm -hmm. actual like good productions, good Curate. venues. Yeah, curated. So that's the goal. And yeah. I love seeing that so much because it's like, you know, you see all the, the big guys always, you know, doing all the big, big shows and winning. And then you got the underground still like making it happen. And I just love to see it, especially in Florida too. Like, I know. There's so many, so well, many little. It's wild when you see like the major agencies start to push clients in like one venue instead of another yep. and it's like yep. yo you know you're doing something right like when some shit's like this going down. exactly yeah you just you just do and right now do you feel like you're like going from like date to date like level-headed or do you often think about what you want more for the project in the future like do you have this like epitome of like where you see this going or yeah. are you taking it like step by step and saying whatever rolls, we're rolling with it. Let's I would go. say I'm, I would say it's a 50-50 between both of those because I do have a vision and mm -hmm. I have the means for the vision because my manager owns Beware and it's a big production company in Atlanta and they run like Ultra, they do the Ultra Resistance Tent. Oh, they yeah. did um, EDC Orlando Circuit Grounds. Like they do sound yeah. and production. He just owns a warehouse full of a bunch of stuff. And for my New Year's show in Atlanta that I'm headlining, we're mm -hmm. sending a, a semi truck full of production so we're going to build a custom, like, you know, whole setup. It's called the drip. It's like my vision of what my live set's going to be like. Like, Bro. I like actually a bunch of different position lasers, not like the typical lasers you would see, like some shooting up, some shooting down from yeah. the ceiling, more sound, just like a Love really it. curated night, really. So we- um, Your music needs a good sound system. Definitely does. It definitely definitely does. does. There's just so much like low wubby shit that needs to be smacking on those subs. And yeah. I've played a couple of places. I'm like, wow, I know these kids are so disappointed right now. Yeah. Like, Fuck the low end is so important. So, well, so that's important. That's something to talk about too, where it's like, you know, we all post on our social media the highest highs and the best points and the things we want to show people. And I think more than ever, there are people who are transparent that this is not what every show looks like. Yeah. And this is not every day. Yeah. But it's like, I'm sure on your journey in the last six months, it's like you have everything from crazy fucking insane pack shows to maybe sets where you say the sounds like sounds like shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a few. <laughs> yeah. There's been a few. Yeah. I never wanted to like openly say anything about it. Like. Because it was in, they weren't like my Target shows. Target fans, though. Yeah, you that too. Saying? You know, you're like, bro, you're here, and yeah. I can't give you all of me. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, and maybe they had a better experience than what I think they had. You know, because sometimes I'm just like really hard on myself. I'm like, wow, that probably sucked really bad. Yeah. But for me, it sucked. It might not have sucked for anybody else. So who knows? But you know, those nights are always going to come. I think. I think it's inevitable. There's going to be letdowns, and there's yeah. going to be. It just makes the win so much better. Absolutely. Like, the good nights, you know. So. Yeah. And you've done a few headlines. You've done like some cool 360 headlines. Yeah, I, I actually, all, all headline shows I did this year, I sold every single one of them out. And there were four of them. So Salt Lake, oh, Tampa, Seattle, San Diego, all sold out. Let's fucking go. So Was that, TK 360? Sure was. Yeah. yeah. Granted, that was a smaller room, but still, like, that was so cool. No, like, that's so cool. I, yeah. I wished when I did my TK show, I did it on Thursday. There was like fucking hurricane outside. But mm. I literally kept thinking, because I think your show was like a month after me or a month before me. It was in, Mine was in April. Yeah, was mine was in year. March. Okay, yeah, yeah, so it was a month before me. I think I saw 
videos or photos from your set. And I was like, yeah, it, was it was the first time I saw like the 360 set up there. Yeah. I was like, yo, that's sick. I cannot wait to that's go back cool. there. I love TK. So yeah. grimy and fun. Yeah. I love it. Uh, and and the, it, it real, it's literally the like the exact opposite of anything that's ever existed there. It's and the it, most like, Florida venue ever. <laughs> I love it so much. The karaoke. It's so fun. The soju. Yeah, like, it's, it's a recipe for a fun disaster, for it sure. It is. And you don't <laughs> deal with, like, there's no street traffic. You got to want to be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a destination. Yeah, venue. that's right. It is kind of out in the cut. It's yeah. cut. Yeah, it's yeah, in the cut. It's okay. like between Bush Gardens and USF. Like, that's right. You're not getting there any easy way. Yeah, you, yeah you're Yeah, you driving there no matter what. You're driving sure. there no matter what. You're off of Fowler. Like, hope you don't get shot. Like, it's great. Yeah, there's a couple of sketchy spots yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we love a good North Tampa run. Oh, I love Tampa, man. Yeah. Tampa. I mean, <laughs> it's happening everywhere, though. You're in Phoenix, right? Sure am. Is it like, chilling like i feel like i only saw a little bit of phoenix but it was just so flat so dry <laughs> it's so very taxi. very dry yeah but it's nice because it's a valley like every okay. everything around you is a mountain so it's just like you're yeah. surrounded by mountains but when you were there when was gold rush august it was in october it was october I, and it was still it was hot so hot, wow now bro. you would now you'd be cold there it's like 40 at night there really yeah it gets pretty yeah. cold now but yeah the i thought i was gonna there. see ufo i said if it's gonna happen anywhere it's gonna really happen here yeah. yeah, probably because literally it's the same weather every single day. Clear skies, like it's just it's the same thing every day. I've seen rain once since April. Do you feel One like time. the music scene there is like popping? I would say it's pretty pretty. I mean, there is this underground company there. Like I said, underground's the best. They're called uh, I Don't Give a Funk. Okay, and they throw the coolest little shows. Like, and it's so all it's all ran by um, a husband and a wife, and they oh, just no. they tag team these projects together, and it is just the coolest. She hand builds the stages. Like, it's just so cool. And my girlfriend works for them and does promotion for them. So I've gotten to go to a bunch of their shows. And it's such a cool little, like, local underground vibe and super dope. That's and cool. then Relentless Beats, obviously, they're the big ones there. Sunbar. But all Sunbar those guys. is so, so cool. I haven't played there. I've only played Dark Star. Cool okay. venue. I like yeah. Dark Star, but Sunbar is the goal. I want to play there so bad. Yeah. And a funk event would be cool, but they don't really, like, book the kind of style that I play. Like, funk is in, like, P H O N K? Uh, like, no. Fun uh, like, funky. Music. I don't. I D G A F N K. Oh. Yeah, so funk, like nice. everything's funky. That's like they'll they'll do like disco house nights. They'll do okay. like uh, they booked uh, what's his name? They booked Trip Street, Easy Bake, like, so they do like wookie stuff Got and then they do like it. funky house music. So that's a lot. Super cool, super cool. That's very cool. Everywhere has their own little thing. There's a gem in every city I've noticed. Yeah, there's a gem. Are there any cities that like you've grown really fond of? Like you love going there. Like you love exploring. Like you can have a day. Yeah, like, and then like. The venue's dope. The crowds are dope. Like yeah. everything that just like aligns. For okay. You. I would say, so I've never liked New York until recently on my last trip. I got converted oh. and I loved it. I, I was by myself just adventuring the streets, like, you know, hitting little cannoli spots, like yeah. just getting little pieces of food from little spots. And it was just like the coolest experience of my life. Mm. And I've never done that. I've always been so intimidated by New York. Didn't like it. Yeah. But now, like, that's for sure a city that if I ever get booked in, I'm going to make sure I book my flight so I can enjoy the whole day there type thing. Yes. Yep. And then Salt Lake's another favorite of mine. Really? Love Salt Lake. Okay. It's so beautiful. All right. So beautiful there. It's like a 30-minute fucking plane ride from here. Super close. Oh, yeah, hour, yeah. It's like an hour minutes, for us. Yeah, yeah from yeah. Phoenix. So, now nah, I connect there a lot, too. Salt Lake has really dope festivals. V2 yeah. Presents, yeah, like, V2 Every fire. time I see, like, you get lucky, like, the this, the that, the this, the that. Like it's it's totally um on like this like lake and the desert and like it meets in the middle. Like the the scenes that I've seen from festivals there are just like fucking wild. Yeah. It's it's like right in you know, it's in a mountain range. Yeah. It's like right there. Yeah. And and V two puts on just really cool, like curated dope events. They sure do. And then there's another underground company there, Mutiny. They do That's who you do your show, right? Yeah, the three sixty. Yeah. yeah, those guys are so cool. Really? I love them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, those are like, it's like you have, like, speaking to back end, you know, if you're talking to like an agent or a manager, like you have like those AV promoters, you know, those insomniacs, those relentless beats, those disco Donnies of the world. But then like right underneath them, you have all these guys like me, me like Headbang Society, like all of them. And, and, you know, No Sleep Presents, Primal Productions. Yeah. And, you know, they're still figuring out the ropes and maybe they don't have the buy-in from like all the agents or all the big right. acts, 
but they're really curating and like putting on for like the scene and culture in which they want to build. Yeah, all the upcomers, just everyone's getting shine from it. Yeah, I love it so much. Yep. So, and you know, when you may not get like a headline play like from one of those A guys, and they're like, "Oh, you're not ready. We haven't seen the history." It's like there's nothing wrong with going with a company that believes in you and like they show out for you. Oh, it's yeah. like a different feel. Oh yeah, 100%. you know. Yeah, I I did one in um, North Carolina in Raleigh with Space Camp. Okay, and. Like their whole entire team was just so nice and so friendly and so like hospitable. And I was like, damn, it should be like this everywhere. Hell yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. And oh, yeah. And it makes it makes a hell of a difference. And then it's like also from our journey, you know, if they buy in early, like you're going to fuck with them forever. Oh, like yeah. whether you're an artist that collabs That's with so you, true. believes in you, you're like, I, I will never, when those guys who haven't bought in yet come and I will never be like, yo, fuck off. You didn't buy in early. Like exactly. I understand it's part of the process. It is. But you'll never forget who did buy in early when, yep. when you knew you weren't ready for them to buy it. Exactly. And you yep. were like, they saw it. There's they been a bunch it. of those. There's been a bunch of those for sure. Mm -hmm. They're going to be uh, like friends and family forever for sure. Because it's just different when they buy in early. Like you said, they're taking a risk. It is. They believe. Like they wouldn't do it if they didn't believe, you know? Yeah. So it's nice to also have people that aren't worried about maybe losing some money, you know, because that does happen here and there like for does. people, I'm sure. So, you know, when it's not all about the money, it feels more like feels genuine. It feels does good. feel genuine. And yeah. then it's like, too, it's it's finding like a happy middle ground. Like, yo, I'm not asking for 5K. I'm asking for for 1500 and a door deal. And let me prove my worth to you. Yeah. If I bring you the money, we all win. Yeah. If I don't bring you the money. You're still not losing. Yeah. You're you're spending what you would have spent on a local lineup mm -hmm. all together and, and you're walking away breaking even. Yeah. Like like having those kind of give and takes to get, you know, just some traction and momentum in like markets that like you necessarily don't have a presence in yet. Yeah. And it's it's also wild where it's like you can be so strong in an area like Atlanta, like Florida, like New York, but then there's like fucking twenty other places that you gotta be strong. Yeah. To get to that point where any major festival will turn around and say, you're worth 10,000 tickets. You're worth 5,000 tickets. Exactly. You're worth 1,000 tickets. It's such a grind and like diligence to make the rounds, do it effectively, build the community, build the fan base. Exactly. Is there a moment when you felt like, all right, like I'm not a regional local anymore. Like, 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 what was that transition? Like, I know the Lost Land set was a really pinnacle point for you because you had gotten like some hype on like, I think it was, it was one of your original songs, Liquid Stranger had been yep. supporting. Yep. People were like, what the fuck is this? Yep. Benny Rimstraw. Yeah, that and, one and Ear Tickle. Yeah, yeah. and Ear yeah. Tickle. Yeah. And then you did the Lost Land set, fucking packed. And then a lot happened for you after that. But that doesn't necessarily mean like inside you were like, yo, it's happening, it's happening. Happen. Yeah, I like, would say that was actually the that turning was. point. Okay. I will always say Lost Lands 2022 was the turning point for not just my career, but for my life. Because that's when like everything snapped and into reality in front of my eyes. And I was like, okay, this is happening. And I do have this pull and I am doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when I did truly not feel like a local no more. Even though I was playing out of state shows for a minute. Yep. But that was truly the moment where I was like, okay. This, this I'm doing something right, and then I just all the traction that came after that was even more proving. Like all the hype I got, all like my idols following me, saying they listened to my whole set because they heard the hype behind it, and just like all this crazy stuff that like transpired from it. Like the official SoundCloud Twitter uh, followed me and told me, like tweeted about me. They're like, yeah, everyone telling me should drop this set, and like it got millions of views. Dude. And then yeah, it's just John Summit followed me. It was like, yo, what was this house song you played in your set? Like all these random little crazy things. And so it was just like, wow, dude, yeah, this is like, you know. Did you so feel like it was any different of a set than you'd put together? Here's the craziest thing about my Lost Land set that not a lot of people know is when I plugged my USB in, it corrupted my playlist. So I had to use the USB where the playlist wasn't in order. It was just all tracks. So I freestyled my Lost Land set that night. I freestyled it from start to finish. And yeah, that was like, I looked back at my manager when I plugged it in and he was like, what? And then in my head, I was like, don't tell him you're good. I was like, just put in the other USB. I plugged it in and go to playlists. There's no playlist. It's just all tracks. So I had about 800 songs on that USB. I had to like scroll through, but it's something that I've like realized that I'm way better at freestyling my sets. Like I will plan the intro and the outro maybe, but for the most part, I'm 
reading how the people are moving and it's all freestyle at all times to be honest most people are probably going to be like that's unprofessional blah, blah, blah. okay well no 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 it's, it's working. not i've One, heard people say it's not that's why i said that it it's i don't think it's unprofessional you found what works for you i think i'm a pro at freestyling so <laughs> well i have a few thoughts on that first that's the nightmare I have when I take too many edibles. It's oh no! Literally having a freestyle set. No, plugging in my USB. Oh, and, and it's and just missing. done. I though. have like these weird Inception dreams where like I'll be on stage and then I run to get my USB and I like fall into a fucking waterfall and oh, then like I'm the in DJ another, dreams. I in love another those. fucking country. In my dreams, I never actually play the set. I never actually plug in. <laughs> it's always everything leading up to that moment, bro. Yeah, but that's what it is. But that's what it is. And then, like, somehow, like, through the inception of, like, the waterfall, then I'm back in the green room, and I'm trying to get everything together, and then I hear somebody else playing on the stage, and I'm like, they skipped me. They skipped me. No. And then, and then I just start fucking crying, and my boyfriend has to wake me up. It's great. It's lovely. But what I also think oh it's an ode to is, like, the DJ days. The resident DJing, the mm -hmm. understanding how to DJ. Yeah. I, I did a show in Boston with Nightmare like three weeks ago, and I used to own CDJs, and I and I don't own them anymore. And I put all these crazy cue points and loops where like at Ritz, I'd be fucking killing that shit. I'd yeah. be like, yo, one, two, three, four, double, cut the lows. We're good. We're good. And I was up there, and I was like, fuck. I was like, yo. I was like, my chops are like not like on top of it like I used to be when I would do it three times a week, four mm -hmm. times a week. When I would have them during COVID, all that stuff, I'm like, I'm just in so music mode and like putting together live shit that like the DJ part of it is like, that's something I love and I know I'm good at and I can pull it out of my ass, but it's still like that's in you from all of your years of DJing, 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 DJing yeah. and being able to go, yo, I can read this crowd. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I, I think people say it's unprofessional, because a lot of people can't imagine themselves doing that. Being in front of like 5,000 people yeah. and being like, they're not feeling it. Let's switch it up. Yep. I know my crates and my music and where everything's at to a T mm -hmm. to where I know in the back of my mind, at the back of my hand, where to go, what to do, what to queue up. Let's switch it up. Yep. When you see people not feeling it or not digging it, like walk me through it. Like, do you still have like, edits you make that you know you want to throw in the set mm. and like you have like just a crate and you're going back and forth and I know some sets I'm sure are more like hey I know how this is gonna go mm. maybe we'll throw a few things here and there yeah. but when you do like ever get in front of a crowd because like the type of music that you play is just such like a niche and they're like not fucking feeling it like mm. I could see this maybe happening at like a black tiger show mm -hmm. or like something that's a bit more like commercial like yep. not underground what do you do so for those, I will go into what's called my cheat code songs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're just like mostly songs that have gone super off in the past, EDM wise, or I'll do like a edit of a song that everyone's going to sing along to that I know it's like not corny, but it's, it'll be hype enough for everyone to sing along to. So that's usually like something I'll pull out. Like if I feel like the crowd's not feeling it, I'll just do a little cheat code song. Everybody loves a good sing along. Yeah. Song. Try to bring them back in. Like, I mean, that's really all you can do because if you continue going the way it's going then it's just the vibe's just going to continue to go down and down and down and yeah you can read it the the people on the rail will tell you everything yeah you know? they'll tell you everything because those are the first faces you're going to see and i've had my fair share of people just like staring staring me into my soul it's like making me feel bad for even being up there and i'm just like bro i am trying my best up here you know the roughest so. is like the back to you oh my god on the rail you know like the shoulder like the I should be in like the Hollywood Roosevelt Lounge. I'm not at a mm -hmm. dubstep show and yep. I'm enjoying and my, the kids who my are corona. On the rail like this, it's like with their arms on it. Yeah. Really relaxed. Yeah. yeah it's like, man. Yeah. yeah. Get it together, guys. But, but it trains you. It like puts your body through such a thing where you have to like zone out. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a sports thing where, where like you can't pay attention to anyone but the people vibing you and giving you back that energy. Yeah. So then like when you have your headline shows and everybody's there to see you, you're like, I'm on one. Everybody's talking into this. Like, let's go. Exactly. Yeah. Always being in a weird like set time throughout the progression of the night can always like deem the audience's like engagement level and their 100%. like fuck with you ability level. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking wild. It's a crazy game. It's it, a crazy is, it is game. such, such a game. Um. So tell me, when you kind of went from that like local regional level past Lost Lands, because you're one of the only artists that I know that I feel comfortable about 
speaking about like the circle becoming smaller, like losing friends. Like, yeah. did you go through that? Like, did that happen? Uh, I would say that once everything did pick up, I, I can I can visualize a couple of people I might have grown away from, but it mm -hmm. wasn't people that I was seeing. Yeah. Like my family, like my real friends and my mm -hmm. like my brothers. And the stuff. real friends. The that's, real ones. That's yeah. That's the key. Like you yeah. got you have acquaintances and then you have friends. Like people throw the word friend around really lightly. Like I, I feel like a friend is someone you could like you'll trust for them to like take a bullet for you type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So um not much change on my side for my circle really. I would say there's just a lot of people that I might have, you know, been, you know, seeing out at local shows or, you know, talking to. I might have lost touch with a couple of people and most of them understand that. I've gotten the few like, oh, you Hollywood, you changed. I'm like, Hollywood, where? Sh show me what's Hollywood. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? This is so. But, you know, for the most part, I, you know, I, I try to treat people with respect. And even if it's someone Talk just inquiring about something, I'll always hit them back. But if it's like something that's not going to serve me or, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to take more energy than give, then it's yeah. just like not, not even worth it. And the real friends is a, is a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real. Like you you know, like mm -hmm. you just know. So you know, those are the ones that they've been through. They knew me before all this touring stuff happened, like everything, and they still treat me the exact same. They still like call me, like, "Hey, how's your mental? How are you feeling?" Like when I'm about to like you know cry, I call them sometimes, like because it's nice getting other perspectives. I'll call my girlfriend a lot too, like when I'm feeling sad and stuff. But it's nice to get like my bro's opinion on stuff and like how other people view it might, you know, add more and more to it. Like, I feel like there's no exact right way to do it, but if you can get advice from numerous sources, it just, it's so much better. So yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's more heads than one. I yeah. mean, speaking of more heads than one, do you have a few collabs you're excited for that you're working on right now? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, Benda and I have a really cool one sitting on one with Hamro. Um, Bear Grylls and I just dropped ours. That was yeah. one I was sitting on for minutes. Um, Fuego, a little, yeah. little historic yeah. actor. Yeah, I used to, used to go and see He's him play G. back in the day, like when he had that uh, that bear? sweaty brown like yeah. bear suit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, I got a Vol uh, me and Vulgar just made a collab. So I'm doing some rhythm stuff. Oh, rhythm. Yeah, I rhythm. love I love Vulgar. I, you know, I like all the masked rhythm kids that have been coming out because a lot of them are really cool and humble kids. But okay. it's just, I just like the new wave. It's just, you know, people are really fucking with it. And these kids are selling out shows being like six months into the game. It's pretty crazy. I know. So I'm with it. I like it. And Do you owe that to like TikTok or like like the virality <sighs> asset? Because it's like in, you don't see that happening in like melodic dubstep for the most part or melodic bass music. Like it's this rhythm, like. It's just. Like kind of further extension of like the cavern, sun death. Yeah. Thing. You know, like I saw all of those little renegades like yeah. pop the fuck off. Yeah. Like this doesn't happen at normal. Festivals. No, it doesn't happen like that. They just have this cult following that I, I love it. I love being a part of it. I like making it. It's so fun. Yeah. And so I've been like becoming like, you know, cool with a couple of these kids that, you know, do the mass stuff and have some collabs coming out with them as well. So I'm just yeah. doing like trying to just work with whoever I fuck with. And if they fuck with me and they want to make something, then we run it. So yeah, I'm just sitting on a, on a ton of things right now. So especially like with what you're doing, just having little ideas, demos, things to shop around. Oh, is like yeah. Always lovely. Oh, yeah. It's so, wonderful. Yeah. Um, End of the year run. Tell me where you're going to be at. So this is my last show till the 28th. 28th, okay. I will be in Kansas City with Murata and Jordan. Jaqui and Hugh K and Great Milk. Love Jordan. Yep. Jordan's the man. And then day off in Orlando. And then on the 30th, I'm at the Majestic Event Center for the New Year's Eve Eve event they're throwing. Uh, I think that's... Uh, is that in Orlando? It is in Orlando, okay. yeah. Um, the company, though. And Hole, yeah, it's with Hole. Hole's on the line of Space oh, Wizard. Oh, I've seen, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know who it is. Is it Code is. Lockdown? It's Code Lockdown? Yeah, yeah. it's got to be Code Lockdown. I'm sorry, 100%. I forgot the name, guys. I'm sorry. 100%. No, yeah. it's Code Lockdown. Yeah, yeah okay. Because I saw that drop and I was like, damn, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, because yeah. my friend Maureen works for them, so she's cool. been helping out a lot. So that and then the day after that is my headline New Year's Eve show at, that in Atlanta. Home? Yep, in the club I came up in. That'll be very so, cool. So, yeah, we're bringing all custom production. Like, yeah, got a whole truckload of stuff coming. It's so, going to be crazy. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I really love catching up with you always. This was awesome. We'll do this until we have like 30 of them. We really should just do them like once a year, well, twice a year and just see. I want to eventually, I don't know. Do you listen to Rogan at all? I do. Okay. I do, listen do you know to the Protect Our Parks episode? Yeah. With sure like Shane do. Gill, yep, and Brian, yep. all of them. I want to do like protect our industry oh my and god have like That's... like you like 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 one day like just say fuck it like have you like have like 
Mikey have fucking like two guys. Like, oh like something God. where we could just go the fuck in yeah. and like give no fucks. And then that we do it. Fun. We do it like once a year. Like that everybody a- comes out, everybody flies in. I would be so spot, down for that. Like protect our industry. Yeah, we should like rent like a ridiculously big house and just have all yeah. the homies come just do a podcast yeah, weekend. Just do a fucking podcast oh and go God. wild. Yeah. Get us in trouble. It's yeah, right. I'm down. It'll be great. Let's well, dude, congrats on all your success. Again, it makes what you said before like we're all winning, starting to win in the middle of winning in our own ways. And like karma goes around, comes around like you're a lovely person. And I'm just like so, so glad you. that we get to like do this in our own right. It's been awesome watching you rise as wow. well. It's, it's been wild. I feel like we've known each other about like six, six maybe years? seven. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. yep. Back, back. Early in days. Yeah. 20 year old Lizzie to 19 year old Lizzie Ritz. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wait, you were 20 when you were resident there? 19. 19. How old are you now? 26. Yeah. So five, six years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Time flies, bro. Well, we're going to stay winning. That's we're going to stay is. winning. That's this is just the beginning. Yep. Love you, dude. Love you. All right. Bye, guys. See Peace, ya. Peace, y'all.